Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. This video is the beginning video in our procedural programming course. So all we're going to do in this video is introduce you to Visual Studio and how to get it and where to find things and then create our very first Hello World program. Now, if you're already familiar with Visual Studio or programming in general, you can kind of skip this video and go on to the next one. It's not that important. But if you are completely new to programming, this video will get you everything you need to actually get started programming. All right, so what we're going to do is just download Visual Studio real quick. So since we're programming in C Sharp, there are a few IDEs that we could use, which are just development environments. For programming in C Sharp, you can use anything from Notepad++ to Visual Studio Code or even some online IDEs. But Visual Studio is going to be the one that I'm going to be using in this course. And so what we'll do is actually download Visual Studio Community 2019. So all you have to do is go to visualstudio.microsoft.com or just Google Visual Studio 2019 and then you'll come to this page. Here, just click download and then community and you'll be good to go. Now once it downloads, you'll have the option to set up the installer and obviously run all of these things here and it's going to download everything that it needs we'll talk about these specific download settings though especially if you plan on using your c-sharp knowledge for game development in unity there's going to be some extra settings that you'll want to add in now once we have our download options we need to pick the things that we want to download with so we are going to be downloading a couple of things uh, we will download the asp.net and web development we will download the dotnet desktop development and the universal windows platform development now if you like developing in unity or if you're doing game development with c plus uh, plus you also have the ability to add in these options as well and since i also program in unity i'm going to go ahead and download that and then if you have some other you know, SQL or some other things that you need, you can check these boxes as well and download them all. Now, right now, this is coming in at a 20 gig requirement for an install file. So I'm going to go ahead and install, let this run, and I'll pick up after it's finished downloading. All right, guys. So the download has just finished and Visual Studio 2019 popped up like this. So you should see the installer kind of finish off. We can go ahead and close that. And now we have Visual Studio 2019, and it's gonna show us the recent projects that I've worked on, and it'll show us some getting started options. What we'll go ahead and do is create a new project, and I'm just going to create a console application, and for the majority of this course, that is all we're going to be working. Actually, for the entirety of this course, we're only going to be working in console apps, so that way uh, we can learn the basics of programming before we get into doing anything particularly crazy or advanced with programming in GUIs or games. So console app, double click that, it'll give you the option to name that. We'll go ahead and start the uh, project name with just hello world since this is your first c -sharp project and it would go against everything that the coding gods stand for if we didn't create a hello world application at the beginning of our new coding language journey so once you have the project name you can then pick a location so change that to wherever you want that to be stored go ahead and save that here and then you have a solution name now by default the project name and the solution name are the exact same but you can change that if you will so i'm going to go ahead and change the solution name to be sir pinkbeard's programming course so this way what's going to happen is all of my courses and all of my projects for this course will end up in this side this solution and we'll talk about the difference between a project and solution in just a little bit all right so now that we're in visual studios let's take a look at kind of where things are at and how to start our first program now you'll notice that there's already some code generated here and this is your text editor workspace all of the code that you will write you will write inside this area and location we also by default on the right have a solution explorer and the solution explorer will show you all of the projects and dependencies and any other files that exist inside your solution we also then have a properties panel which will show you different properties for different settings and we have the toolbars at the top now we already have a console.write line hello world and so what we're going to do is we'll just hit the green run button here with the play button 
and it will go ahead and create our very first program for us, which then prints out hello world, which was in the console.write line, and then tells us a bunch of debugging stuff, and then press any key to close the window, which we do, and then it goes away. Now, in addition to the windows that we've already seen, there are two additional ones that I want to talk about. And to see them, we're going to have to go up to the view option and choose them from the drop down list. Now, this will also allow you to bring in extra windows that maybe you have gotten rid of. So, if we were to close out the Solution Explorer and the Team Explorer and we wanted those back, what we could do is view Solution Explorer and then view Team Explorer, and that would bring those in. All right, we could also then bring back the properties panel or the properties window as well, and everything will be back to how it was originally. Now, the two windows I want to talk about are the error list and the output window. Now, when we bring all of these up, this is the standard user interface from Visual Studio 2017. And the error list will show you any weird things going on with your program. So for example, if I just write some code here that doesn't actually do anything, you can see that there is a semicolon expected and there's a warning here. So there's one error and one warning and it's shown down in the error list. The output window will also tell you things like, hey, the build succeeded or the build failed when you try to compile and build your program. But that's it for learning about the Visual Studio interface. We've got some more information to cover, and I look forward to going through this course with you. Thanks for watching. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video.